I'm going to go over this from top to bottom. I explain everything in detail. So um, these are most of the tests that, that, we'll that we will require. Um, just to begin, if you have had some of these tests, one or several of these tests, within the last year, they are usually good. You do not have to repeat them again. Okay. So even if they were done somewhere else, with someone else than, than written in this paper, you do not have to repeat them again. If you have sleep apnea, if you know that you have sleep apnea already, you also do not have to do that again. Okay, that's just up front. Um, some of these things you can do with other people, and I will tell you which one of those you can do with other people than written on this paper here. Endoscopy. That's when uh, it's another doctor or someone called a gastroenterologist. They will do this procedure and they will put a tube in, through your mouth into your stomach, examine it to make sure everything is okay on the inside. And um, you're going to be asleep for that, so don't worry, you're not going to feel this. Uh, and that's a more invasive procedure, so again, that you wait for until you come to the office. Again, if you've had that within the last year, that's perfectly fine. We just need to get the report and that'll be good. Um, everybody needs to see a mental health worker, psychiatrist, psychologist, counselor, um, social worker, anybody, a, a mental health worker. If you have your own, that's perfectly fine. Go and see your own. That person probably knows you best and can give us a statement. And they basically only have to state that you're uh, mentally fit to have surgery, that you're stable. Next thing is everybody needs to go and see a dietitian. And that is what Dr. Blumenthal alluded to earlier. The amount of time, how often you have to go to the dietitian, depends mostly on your insurance plan. Now for our purposes, from our program, we usually only require you to, do, to go twice to the dietitian if you've done other things before. So that's our requirement, minimum is twice. And it needs to be with one of our dietitians because it's geared towards the program. But if you have certain other plans, they may require you to go more often, up to six months. And that's once a month, every four weeks. And sometimes they're really strict about the four weeks. Can't be 27 days, has to be 28 or more days. So, and that all depends really on your individual plan. And even if you have like one insurance, it may differ from company to company, what kind of plan your company bought. So um, we, can, we can look that up, we can find that out after you come to the office, but it's usually even better and easier if you find that out beforehand. And as Dr. Blumenthal said, you can do this by either looking on, online with your card and on the, on, the, on the website for the weight loss surgery policy, um, or you can call them up and ask them or you go to the human resources department and ask. Next thing is a cardiologist. That's a heart specialist. Everybody who's 40 years or older should see a cardiologist. Um, if you have your own, again, go to see your own. Um, if, you've, if you've had some heart tests done recently through your own medical doctor, you still have to go and see a cardiologist and they will probably just get the results and then see what they do with them. So if you're 40 years or older, or if you've had like a heart condition in the past, even when you were younger, then you still have to go. Um, you need a note from your own medical doctor. Same thing, just basically stating that you're medically fit to have surgery or even that you're low risk or moderate risk or even high risk. I mean, they just have to clarify what your medical uh, condition is. And then sleep apnea. Um, uh, just explain sleep apnea a little bit. Sleep apnea is a condition where a person during their sleep stops breathing. And usually you don't know it because you're asleep, um, but if you know if someone sleeps in your room or next, they will hear, or actually they will not hear that you're breathing. Um, so you stop breathing and then all of a sudden after a while you start like startling up and you start breathing again. That's sleep apnea. Mostly these people snore a lot. So if someone tells you you snore a lot, then you, it's good likelihood you have sleep apnea. Um, people are tired when they wake up. They have a headache oftentimes during the day. 
They fall asleep just doing normal activities. That's usually sleep apnea. Okay. So almost all men who are overweight have sleep apnea. So if you're a man and you weren't tested, you don't know if you have it or not, you need to get tested. Um, if you're a woman, um, if you have any other symptoms that we just said, then you should get tested. If you do not have any other symptoms and no one told you that you're snoring a lot or that you have this, then you don't have to get tested. Okay. Again, if you were tested in the past, if you know you have it, then don't worry about it. Let's let us know, and that's all we know. And the reason why we're doing this is that when you have surgery, we're going to give you pain medications, and they actually make you sleep a little bit more, and they make your oxygen go down a little bit more in the hospital. So if you have sleep apnea and it's not treated, then the risk is that your oxygen goes even lower, and that means your risk of complications is higher. And again, we don't like complications, so we want you treated and so you don't get any complications. And the treatment for sleep apnea is a mask that actually pumps oxygen and pumps air into you. And it, everybody has to get used to their own settings and their own mask. That's why we have to do it before surgery and you, you can't just come to the hospital and we'll slam a mask on your face and say breathe and that doesn't work. So that's why you have to get tested before. All right, then everybody sh should go to two support group visits and um, support group flyers in the chart and then have it basically signed by the leader. And then the last thing, and then in, um, in the office, we'll give you a, a slip for blood work, so don't do it before, we'll just give it to you in the office. And the last thing is a video, there's a website on that video, and there's also a link through our hospital website, you can follow those steps. This is a video from the National Society that also explains more about the aftercare, and we want all our patients to watch that, so um, I'll you can either watch it now or after you've been to the office, that's up to you. And I'm gonna, at some point I'm going to ask you two easy questions about it to make sure you actually watched it. A little quiz. That's very easy. Are there any questions about those tests? Yes? The sleep apnea. I had one back in May. Is that one still if, if you've had sleep apnea recently with your current weight, yeah, that's good. Even if you've, if you've weighed like this for five years and you had a test five years ago, that's good, yeah. These tests are the tests that you have to do before surgery. And when you come to the office, we will determine which ones you need and we'll check them off. So some people wait until they come to the office and then talk to us first and then decide what they want to do and then they go through the testing. Some people are really eager. They want to get going with this. They want to, get, they want to have the surgery yesterday. And they want to do what they can do. So you can start these tests anytime now. You can make most of your appointments here yourself, except for these top two. Most of these you can make yourself. If you just call these doctors up and say, yeah, I'm gonna have weight loss surgery with Dr. Bloom and Dr. Paul, I need to have a stress test, I need to, have, I need to see a cardiologist, I need to have sleep apnea testing. They, people will know that. I mean, these are people we work with, they've seen hundreds and hundreds of our patients. So you can start this before if you want but you do not have to, okay? You don't have to do this. You can just wait until you come to see us and then you start the process. All right. And that then will determine a little bit how long it takes. Someone asked earlier, how long does it take? It really depends on how often you have to see a dietitian, and that will determine the whole length of the, the whole process.